So far we have seen five types of statements, our special terminal print command, variable declarations, variable assignments, function calls and method calls. As you have seen we must place semicolons between statements. We will now introduce another type of statement called a conditional or if statement. A conditional is used when you want the program to execute a statement or statements only when a particular case is true. So for example, if we wanted to print 1 to the terminal when the value of our random integer is 1, we could add an if statement. When we run this, sometimes the word 1 will be printed to the terminal, which will happen only when the random value we generated equals 1. Sometimes we will only see the numeric value because the second line is printed only when the criterion is met. In an if statement, the expression between if and then must generate a Boolean value. If this Boolean value is true, the statements between then and end are executed, otherwise they are not executed. In the example we just went through, there is only one statement inside the conditional. However, you can actually have any number of statements inside the conditional, as long as they are separated by semicolons. Semicolons are only required between statements in multi-statement blocks, e.g. between then and end. For example, notice there is no semicolon after the final statement. However, because there is no consequence to extra semicolons, putting a semicolon after every statement doesn't hurt anything and can be a good way to prevent errors. Because an if statement can contain other statements, it is possible for it to contain another if statement. This is sometimes called a nested conditional. Note that we used spacing in our program to make the logic of the program clearer. However, presentation doesn't care about such spacing, and the same behavior would result if you wrote the entire program on a single line. Even though spacing doesn't affect how your program runs, we strongly recommend using new lines and indentation to make your programs easier to read and to write correctly. In fact, the presentation editor will help you do that by adding tabs when you press enter after a then, and removing tabs after you type an end. An if statement can also optionally have other conditions and statements that can be used to specify what should happen if different conditions are met. The simplest form this can take is the addition of an else statement. When you add an else condition, you can specify one thing to happen if your initial criterion is true, and another thing to happen in all other cases. When we run this, we will see either the word 1 and the value 1 printed to the terminal, or we will see greater than 1 and a number 2 to 5 printed to the terminal. If we are interested in having more control than the simple if-else structure can provide, then we can also include any number of else-if conditions. Note that the term is else if and not else space if. If you were to use else space if instead, you would mistakenly create a nested conditional without a closing end. When this if statement containing multiple else ifs is evaluated, the if condition is evaluated first. If it is true that random value equals 1, the statement after then are executed and the else if and else portions are skipped entirely. Statements are taken in order, so if the initial condition is false, then the first else if is evaluated. As soon as any of the conditions are true, the others are skipped.
Note that we can have any number of else if portions and that it is not required to have an else portion. Again, note that when an if statement has multiple sections, at most one of these sections will actually be executed. If there is no else condition, then it could happen that no section will be executed. Also note that each section may contain arbitrarily many statements. Another concept that is relevant to if statements is scope. The scope of a variable refers to what portions of code know about that variable. You can only use a variable within its scope. Since you can't use a variable before you declare it, its scope begins with the declaration. If you try to use a variable outside its scope, presentation will tell you it doesn't know what that variable is. In this example, we can't print the value of random value before we declare it. If a variable has global scope, that variable is known throughout the entire scenario after its declaration. In other words, its scope does not end. The scope of a variable created within the block of statements inside an if statement, however, ends when that block of statements ends. For example, if we write a new if statement that creates a string variable that we want to print later, we will see an error message because the variable is not known outside of the if statement. The scope of what to print ends at the keyword end and can't be used after that. However, we are free to use it before that. If your if statement has multiple blocks, Variables declared within one block may only be used inside that block and not inside other blocks within the same if statement. In this example, we cannot use what to print inside the else part because its scope ends with else. If you will need to make use of a variable outside of an if statement, you must declare the variable outside of the if statement. While your PCL program is running, when execution reaches the point at which a variable scope ends, the variable will actually be destroyed. This means that the computer memory used to store the value for that variable is released and can subsequently be reused for something else. Therefore, the restriction on where you can use a variable is not an artificial one. Outside the variable scope, the value no longer exists to be used. There are other programming structures that limit the scopes of a variable that we will discuss later.